This is HET 119, Electricity 2, Motor and Controls, and we're covering troubleshooting control devices. This is week 14. This week assignments will support the HVAC learner to troubleshoot heating controls, troubleshoot air conditioning controls, troubleshoot refrigeration controls, troubleshoot thermostats, troubleshoot pressure controls, troubleshoot limit controls, troubleshoot safety controls, troubleshoot contactors and relays, and troubleshoot switches. Troubleshooting HVAC systems is a necessary component of a technician's daily job. When there is a problem with a HVAC refrigeration system, the problem can be anywhere in the system, but it takes the specific knowledge and skills to pinpoint the issue and make the necessary repairs. It will take a competent and skilled technician to troubleshoot a system in a reasonable time. Therefore, knowing how to use the correct tools, having the technical knowledge, and having the craftsman mechanical skills to complete the job is critical. The first step in troubleshooting is having the technician to learn how to use critical thinking skills to evaluate what at hand and eliminate unnecessary information which can confuse the problem. After that point, testing and verifying the problem can be pinpoint the problem and uh, not the source of the problem. Diagnosing the problem and making the repairs is the final step in the troubleshooting process, but not having craftsmanship skills, the technician is lost. So the problem can reoccur because of poor installation or other issues. Consequently, a technician must be well-rounded in both technical and mechanical skills. So in terms that the learner need to research this week is troubleshooting, craftsmanship, test equipment, voltmeter, amp meter, and ohm meter. Current flows through a human body can be deadly. Therefore, precautions should be taken to decrease the likelihood of an electrical hazard. If small amounts of current flows through the heart, it could stop the heart from beating. With that in mind, a person must keep the body insulated from having current uh, from making contact. The combination of voltage and current through the human body can cause various types of issues from uh, a small sensation to paralyze of the body. Using personal protection equipment, insulated work boots or shoes, insulated tools, and turning off the power source when it is possible will help to keep from making electrical contact and becoming part of the circuit. The purpose of personal protection equipment is to reduce employee exposure to hazards when engineering or administrative controls are not feasible or effective to reduce the, uh, these risks to um, acceptable levels. PPEs is needed when there are hazards present. PPEs has the uh, serious limitations that it does not eliminate the hazards at source and may result in employees being exposed to hazards if the equipment fails. Any item of the personal protection equipment imposes a barrier between the wearer slash user and the working environment. This can create additional strain on the wearer, impair their ability to carry out their work, and create significant levels of discomfort. Any of these can discourage wearers from using the PPEs correctly, therefore placing them at risk of injury, uh, ill health, or under extreme circumstances death. So it is important that even though it may impair the ability to carry out the job, such as wearing gloves or putting safety glasses on to protect your life and livelihood, it is, uh, in my opinion imperative. Personal protection 
equipment refers to protective clothing, helmets, goggles, or other garments or uh, equipment designed to protect the, uh, the wearer's body from injury. The hazards addressed by uh, protective equipment include physical, electrical, heat, chemicals, biohazards, airborne, particulate matter. Protective equipment may be worn for job-related occupational safety and health purposes as well as for sports and other recreational activities. Protective clothing is applied to uh, traditional categories of clothing and protective gear applied to items such as pads, guards, shields, masks, and others. Lockout tagout is a safety procedure which is used in the industry and research settings to ensure that dangerous machines are properly shut off and not started up again prior to the completion of maintenance or servicing work. It requires that hazardous power sources be isolated and render inoperative before any repair or procedures is started. Lock and tag works in conjunction with a lock usually locking the device or the power source with the has and placing it in such a position that no hazardous uh, power sources can be turned on. The procedure requires that a tag be affixed to the lock device indicating that it should not be turned on. Areas where there can be electrical hazards and why a technician need to be aware of the potential issues. Electrical service panels. It's live power all the time. Even though the breakers may be turned off, there is still power inside of the service panel. Non-grounded tools can be unsafe because it can ground out and cause current to flow through the person holding the tool. Ground fault services is there for protection and if it's uh, if there's a fault there and if it's not working correctly of course the fault can goes through the person. Grounded equipment is needed at all times and not only being grounded it should have ground faulted protection. Also defective electrical disconnects can cause many different problems because a lot of times if you didn't check the disconnect and you turn it off and it's still in the closed position, current will still flow through it. Troubleshooting is a form of problem solving, often applied to repair filled products or processes. So going through troubleshooting, it is no more and no less than developing a process of using critical thinking skills to take a problem, analyze the problem, then turn around solve the problem, and then re make the uh, needed repairs to complete the process. Then after the process is done, the troubleshooting process is not completed until the equipment has been checked, service started up, and made sure that everything is operating normal. So critical thinking skills. Usually troubleshooting is applied to something that has uh, suddenly stopped working since its previously uh, working state form, uh, the expectations about its uh, continued behavior. So the initial focus is often on recent changes to the system or to the environment in which it exists. So looking at this, it is useful to consider the common experience we have with a light bulb. Light bulbs burn out, we know that, more uh, or less at random. There's no particular time it would do it. Eventually, the repeated heating and cooling of its uh, filament, which causes it to go out. And of course, we know that in time, all light bulbs will burn out. But using critical thinking skills, we know that it will go out. And by understanding what caused it and how to repair it. 
this same process is going through when we're looking at air conditioning or refrigeration systems or uh, ventilation systems. We need to analyze understanding how it works, the sequences of the equipment, and then understanding where the problem is at and what it would take to be able to make changes in it. Understanding the sequence of operation of a refrigeration system is the first step in troubleshooting. Knowing how to read electrical diagrams will aid the technician uh, working through electrical problems. So using a voltmeter, an ohmmeter, to troubleshoot and reading electrical diagrams is a requirement for the HVAC uh, technician to become competent in his or her daily job. So this uh, VOM will be used to check for voltage, open circuits, short circuits, for resistance of motors and other type of uh, loads. Replacing a defective component is the last portion of the troubleshooting process. After determining the problem, then the HVC technician will need to use mechanical and craftsman skills to replace a defective component in the HVC system. During preventive maintenance inspections, on a refrigeration system, the technician need to check all controls for deterioration of the contacts and of the mechanical linkages. For smaller types of controls, replacement of the complete control is preferred than repairing. However, on larger commercial type controls, servicing and replacement of components of the defective parts can be done. So a voltmeter is used to measure the supply voltage and can be used to check the position of switches and contacts. If a switch is open, the voltmeter will read line voltage. The ampmeter is used to measure the current flow through control devices. A motor cannot be truly checked for issues unless a Amp meter is used to check the operating current flow under a load. The best type of amp meter to use for the HVAC refrigeration fill will be the clamp on type of amp meter because of its safety of use. In the picture to the right, you see a technician holding a amp meter and it is clamped around a wire. In the other type of amp meters, you have to disconnect the wire from the source and put the meter in series with it which can cause service issues or a safety hazard. An ohm meter is used to check the continuity of open or closed circuits and resistance of controls and control devices. An ohm meter is much safer to use than a voltmeter with live power for checking controls. With an ohm meter the power to the equipment must be turned off to keep from damaging the meter. Thermometers can be used in the troubleshooting process to check motors, control devices, and controls for overheating. To check the calibration of temperature operated switches and controls must have both a a uh, thermometer and a ohmmeter to diagnose the system. One of the most difficult things for a HVAC refrigeration technician to learn is how to eliminate unnecessary information and concentrating on the task at hand. Where the problem stops is at is where to start looking for solutions. Using critical thinking skills is imperative for understanding the equipment sequence, interpreting electrical diagrams, and focusing on the correct system problem is how good technicians become better. With practice and developing the skills needed can lead to growth in a technician's career and it should be the goal of all technicians. A journeyman HVAC technician will in time come to be a craftsman. 
craftsman skills comes from learning from other craftsmen best practices of how to handle not only the tools but the process of doing a job. The difference between craftsmanship skills and mechanical skills is that mechanical skills rely on changing out components and the equipment will operate. Conversely, craftsman's skills is the process of replacing the correct component and looking for the best way to install the component as well as the, uh, the manufacturer designed it or better. Both skills are needed, but it, it takes time and effort to develop both skills. Mechanical skills come from working with the tools and learning the proper mechanical procedures of using the right tools for the right job. The more a technician uses all the tools for uh, their career field of work, they will become more comfortable of handling the tools with less stress. Therefore, repetitive use is the answer for developing mechanical skills. Using the right tools, the right process of troubleshooting, and the right diagnostic progression a technician will feel comfortable making a decision of replacing the defective component. In the beginning, most new technicians will second-guess themselves, but with practice and determination, increased skills and troubleshooting will occur. Starting the system up and checking the sequence of operation is critical for knowing that the system is operating correctly and the right component was replaced. Without checking a operating the system, the technician is only guessing if he or she made the right decision. Troubleshooting is an art and a science. Troubleshooting is a logical process, but it takes time to develop the skills needed to analyze problems. A technician must develop critical thinking skills to be competent in diagnosing HVAC systems. A HVAC refrigeration technician must understand how a HVAC refrigeration system components operates. A technician should have a working knowledge of both controls and controlled devices. A technician need to know how to properly use test equipment and tools when using a voltmeter to check open circuits. When the switch is in the closed position, the voltmeter will read zero volts. When using a voltmeter to check open circuits, when the switch is in the open position, the voltmeter will read whatever the applied voltage is. All meters can be used to check for open circuits. However, volts must be turned off to keep the meter from becoming damaged from the voltage. 